Say kahayila bo kohu ira na bayana sa. It was more than a decade ago, and it was in a hospital in Alexandria, where a lady in our church by the name of Sharon Westmoreland had major surgery. They had placed her back in her room, and all of a sudden she coded. What that means in America, if you don't understand the Philippines is, she was dying. They lost her, her heartbeat. She had coded. And at that particular time, unbeknowing to anyone, my father felt led to stay at the church late into the night. And my mother came and joined him, and, and my dad was interceding. He didn't know why. But there was a powerful voice of prayer that went from my father. While she was coding in Cabrini Hospital, my father was in prayer at POA. All of a sudden, they said that lady opened her eyes. And the doctor said, you sure gave us a scare. And she said, well, where's Brother Mangan? They said, well, Brother Mangan isn't here. She said, well, I heard his voice. And his voice woke me up. When that doctor told her that Brother Mangan wasn't there, he was there. But it was through the voice of God. And the voice of a man became the voice of God. And it woke up a woman who had been dead. The same man, my father, was in fervent, desperate prayer in Sunsbury, Pennsylvania. When God spoke to him and said, you're going to be the next pastor at Alexandria, Louisiana. Dad said it was an audible voice. And he went to Alexandria, his mother, for a revival in March. That following July, my father was elected pastor there at Alexandria, Louisiana, and laid the foundation for what is now the POA. Because a man heard the voice of God. I will never forget, when I was 10 years old, mother and daddy were in Ohio preaching the Ohio Sunday School Convention. And Melvin and Billy Harkins were staying with me. And in the middle of the night, God woke me up with a dream or a vision at 10 years old. I went to the end of that bed. And at the end of that bed, there was a platform rocker that was there, and I knelt down. It was at that place that God called me to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I heard his voice. Only later to get my flying license and decide that I was going to fly airplanes, but God put me in the storm, I submitted to him. And two days later in my front yard, Brother Bates came to me, he said, you're gonna start a revival in Winfield, Louisiana. I went there on Sunday night with my father's notes and my mother's notes, and I was trying to make a sermon out of something because I had never preached. And I put a sermon together, but nothing happened. He almost apologized thing was over because it was such a bad, bad sermon. But when I got home that night, I told Mother and Dad that I wouldn't be coming home. And at 16th and Day Street, I went behind those old green air conditioned units and I began to cry out to God and seek His face. And I began to say, God, I can't do this. I do know at 10 years old I heard your voice, but I got to hear your voice again. It was at that moment that God spoke to me and I began to write that sermon. And here I stand 50 years later by the grace and power of God because I heard the voice of God. In this hour of the church, many including on this platform, we're here to hear a fresh voice from God. It may be a still small voice. It can be the voice of His Word. It may be an audible voice. It may be through song or it may be through preaching. But God is going to speak to this conference like God has never spoken to the Philippine church. I know it because of the times I felt this very strong in Alexandria. But tonight when I stand at this pulpit, I feel such an unction in the Spirit of God that God is going to speak in this conference. God is going to speak in a special way. There are going to be ministers. Your lives are going to be changed. Pastors' lives are going to be changed. Churches' lives are going to be changed when we hear the voice of God. It started when the angel of the Lord appeared into Moses in a flame of fire. 
And the Bible said he looked and there was a bush that was burning, but it was not consumed. And Moses said, when he saw that bush, he said, I will turn aside and I will see this great sight. Moses had seen many bushes burn, but he was captured. And he was moved when he saw this bush. This burning bush was a type of what God and Moses was supposed to become. And it was intended for Moses to become that kind of fire. The fire that burns but is not destroyed. I want to tell this congregation tonight that we are an apostolic church. And the world cannot duplicate what is upon this church. And the anointing gift that is upon this church, they can't duplicate. We didn't get here just by our books. We didn't get here by our personalities. We didn't get here by our human talents. We got here through the power and the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost. And if I have any influence in the anointing of God upon your life tonight, you let me tell you that every man of God and woman of God in this place must become a flame of fire in the power of the Holy Ghost. Notice what happened when God saw that Moses turned aside. Moses heard the voice of God. He said, Moses, Moses, when the Lord saw that, Moses, Moses, when he saw he turned aside, he said, here am I, draw nigh, take off thy shoes, for thy standest on holy ground. That is when we will hear his voice. When we separate ourselves unto Him. When we're called to higher power by consecration and dedication. The I am of God will become the here I am of your will and it will be settled. God gave Moses a twofold call. It was a call to personal holiness. And then it was a call to a personal mission. Before we can attempt anything for God, we must be something for God. We are not human doings. We are human beings. Don't go until you know that you receive the power from on high. Tarry and wait. I've had a desire and I pray. Mickey will tell you I was in my room a lot. Mike and I went to eat, but this afternoon, I pray God let me tear everything down inside of me. I'm coming here and I know, Lord, that it will be leading because of the times. But I pray in this particular meeting, God, that you will speak to Anthony Mangan. I will put everything out of my life. I will turn everything away from me. I will focus in on you through the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost. And I will say, I am determined to know nothing among you. Say, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I just want to know Jesus. I will tell you, great young men and women of God, when we turn aside to the Lord, and the Lord sees that we have turned to Him and consecrated to Him afresh and new. There will be a fresh outpouring upon our lives like our churches have never seen. When He sees that we are making a turn, God is going to pour His Spirit upon us. It has been said that Moses spent the first 40 years thinking he was somebody. He spent the next 40 years finding out he was a nobody. Then he spent the last 40 years finding out what God could do with somebody who was a nobody. 40 years on the backside of a desert. It's bad enough to be in a desert. But to be on the backside of a desert, that's about as far back as you can get. He was tending Jethro, his father-in-law's sheep. And he came to the mountain of God, even to the hordes, the Bible said. And it was in a flame of fire in that bush that he saw that burning and when he turned there was a further experience that Moses needed to be what he needed to be. He humbled himself. He abased himself before God. He stripped himself before God. And to be a holy man or a holy woman of God we have to linger in the presence of God. Every day with prayer and fasting. To you great men and women of God, I was telling Brother Woodward to, tonight back in that room in the men, I have trouble coming here sometimes and preaching the Philippines. Anything what I'm preaching about seeking God or turning. 
because you're such great and men and women of God. You make such a sacrifice in this conference, uh, in this country, and you're seeing such a great revival. And I see how you people have given yourselves to God, and it's hard for me to stand before you. I battled preaching this message tonight, but God told me to speak what I was going to speak. Because when this church in the Philippines, who's having a greater revival in any country in the world, is happening in your nation. If we will turn aside tonight to seek the face of God, God is going to give this church the greatest revival of this church. The fire burns, but the bush is not destroyed. The good news is that little old shrub became the awesome instrument of God. And I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've come from. I don't care what village or city you may be in. I'm going to tell you, God can take a little weak shrub and set it on fire. And it can change a man that can turn an entire nation world. When Moses told the Lord, I'm not eloquent, I'm slow of speech, I'm slow of tongue. God said unto him, who made your mouth? He said, I'll be your mouth. God didn't promise him to deliver him from his infirmity. He did something far better. God said, I'll come join you as you are. And you and I will become a majority. And we will have a revival together. Tonight in the Philippines, we're putting everything aside. We're understanding there's nothing that limits us but ourselves. We opened on our faces. I've never done that. I've never asked people usually we open a big bang with because of the time. But this church opened on our face before God tonight, humbling ourselves before Him. And God said, when I see that, in fact, I'm going to start a scripture right now that you're going to be able to finish. He said, when I see that, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn turn, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. When he hears our voice, we will hear his voice. I say to you great men and women of God, let's take off our shoes tonight. Let's humble ourselves on the very first night of a cause of the time. And let's say, God, I am here for a fresh touch. I am here for a fresh anointing. I don't care whether you run a thousand or whether you run ten. I am here for a fresh anointing of the power of God. After Moses encountered God at that burning bush, God made him the greatest leader, the lawgiver, the administrator that there's ever been. Moses saw God face to face. Watch this. He stayed on that mountain for 40 days and nights. He turned to God. He was not satisfied just seeing the bush. When he saw that bush, he turned to seek the face of God. God, never let the apostolic church, I didn't say this in Alexandria, but never let the apostolic church just seek his power and not seek his faith. Yeah. Moses got the power when he sought the face. But when he saw God face to face, after staying on that mountain for 40 days, you talking about hearing the voice of God. He began to write and he wrote, you know how many commandments? Ten. You know when those ten commandments came? They came when he turned aside. You know what else happened on top of that mountain? God gave him the priesthood on top of that mountain. You know what else happened on that mountain? God gave him the tabernacle plan on top of that mountain. It all happened when they turned aside and he saw the face of God. Ten commandments, priesthood, tabernacle plan. What will happen with a New Testament apostolic preacher that turns aside tonight to hear the voice of God. What will God reveal to us? But all the 
again when he turned aside. The flame of consuming compassion for his God and people had gripped him that would never leave him. And the Bible said, there rose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses whom the Lord knew face to face. Oh God, let me know you face to face. Let me turn aside and let me hear your voice. And tonight I will open this meeting. And I debated preaching this message all afternoon long. But I debated and God kept speaking. You speak it because it may be one Apostle Paul. It just may be one session. But if they turn to me tonight, I'm going to pour my spirit upon that man or woman. God because he turned and heard the voice of the Lord. It happened to Isaiah. Isaiah had lost his king and oh boy, could he ever tell people how to preach and how to do it. Up to Isaiah 5 he was really laid it out until Uzziah died there and he saw the Lord sitting on the throne. He was high and lifted up and he looked and he saw all these seraphims flying and with twain they did cover their feet and with twain they did cover their face and with twain they did fly. And they were crying, Holy, holy, holy. The intensity of the worship, the burning, fiery, angelic beat, that would be enough to catch our breath. That would be enough to turn us. But it so moved him with what he saw and with what he heard and with what he felt that after pronouncing all those woes in chapter 5, he gets to chapter 6. And he turns himself to God. He said, for mine eyes have seen the King. My eyes have seen the Lord of hosts. He said that 50 times. He said, my eyes have seen the Lord of hosts. Then one of those seraphims flew down with one of those coals. And it touched his lips. That angelic fire having a live coal. Which had taken off of the altar there. He laid it upon his mouth. And he said, thy iniquity is taken away and blotted out. Thy sins are purged and remember no more. And then he heard the voice of the Lord. We started with repentance tonight. We started on our knees tonight. We started like Isaiah tonight. And the Bible said an angel came down and touched his lips. And when it touched his lips, he had a revelation. Whom shall I send? Isaiah said, here I am, God. You can send me. Here, Lord, here I am. Send me. With all the mighty constellations of prophets and preachers, Isaiah became the mightiest prophet of the Old Testament. I can never in a lifetime preach the words from that book. It was a telescopic view from that 53rd chapter that gave us his death, burial, and resurrection. Isaiah 9 and 6, unto us a child is born and a son is given. But he didn't get any of that until he had a chapter 6. Chapter 6 made Isaiah the book that it became. God fulfilled everything through Isaiah's life when he turned and saw the Lord high and lifted up. And he heard the voice of God. They eventually saw him in the sunder in the holly log. And he died a martyr for God. But he changed an entire world. And today Isaiah is still speaking. Because he turned and he saw the Lord high and lifted up. I will tell this general Lord God's hands upon y'all. Brother Bodegas, God's hand has been upon y'all. Brother Trinidad, God has been with y'all. I remember seven, eight years ago when y'all were projecting we want to have a million people. What a great vision. What a great goal. We want to have a million people in this church. He told me today, Brother Buckland, that this congregation now in the Philippines has 1,100,000 constituents. And that you're projecting to have another million in the next five years. I believe God's going to give that kind of revival. If we turn aside, God's going to give that kind of revival. God touches one man. I don't know who it's going to be tonight. 
I don't know if you want to come down while I'm preaching. I don't know what it's going to be. It may be one man or one woman. But God can raise up not just a group of people. He can raise up hundreds of people tonight. That's got a fresh anointing and fire. That's hearing the voice of God. That when you leave this place Friday night. You're going to go home with a great word. And God's going to let you know what to do. God's going to let you know how to say it. God's going to let you know how to build it. God's going to let you know what to do. He's going to lead you in the way to go. If we will turn and hear his voice. God's going to speak to you. There's Daniel. Oh, behold, the hand touched me, which set upon my knees and the palm of my hands. He said, an angel hit me, and when it did, it threw me on my hands, and it threw me on my knees, and I fell before God. He said, it violently seized him. Daniel said, when God placed his hand on me, it put me on my face. He touched me, and he gave me an urgency to seek him, and all that was with and God made Daniel his oracle. Daniel never let up on prayer with fasting. God needed a voice. And he found one through Daniel. Can I tell you that our pulpits have never needed voices more than it does in this hour. We don't need to be echoes. We need to be voices. We don't need to be preaching just what we read. We need the supernatural touch of all God. John the Baptist recorded four times that he declared, I am the voice of him that sent me. And I am the one of him that sent me. It's not my voice, but it's his voice flowing through me. And his voice speaking the voice of God, empty synagogues all around him. Daniel then said, and I set my face in the Lord God to seek my prayer and supplication and fasting. What? To sackcloth and ashes I turned. I fasted, I prayed, I set myself apart to God, and he made it clear. He didn't get his understanding from God's word alone. He didn't get his understanding from the institution of man. He got his understanding from the revelation of Almighty God. And I want to tell all of you young preachers, I thank God for all the anointing and knowledge that we have coming our way. For with knowledge you have power. And you need to become knowledgeable preachers. But let me say this to this congregation tonight. We need men and women of God propagating the gospel that is full of the power and the action of the Holy Ghost and have the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I thank God for Acts. In fact, I was telling someone today, Acts is one of the greatest Bible colleges. I thank God for what's happened there. We sponsored that one young man from Vietnam. And Ryan told me before I left to come over here, uh, Brother Raymond, that that one young man, when we sent him to Acts, right, he didn't have the Holy Ghost and he hadn't been baptized. But he came to Acts. Y'all taught him. He got the Holy Ghost and he's gotten baptized. He's going back to Vietnam. He has baptized 2,000 in the name of Jesus Christ. God raised up somebody we didn't know. Somebody brought him to your Bible study. You taught him, but he got more than just knowledge. He got more than just knowing the doctrine. He got more than just that. He got an unction of the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that flowed through him. And let me tell you, like Daniel, nobody can teach him how to interpret dreams. Nobody can teach him how to do the supernatural things that Daniel did that came while he was in prayer that an angel touched him while he was in sackcloth and ashes seeking God. God gave him revelation and God gave him power and God gave him anointing. I have prayed for the Philippine church. We have given much prayer before we came here and I am going to speak a word right now in the name of Jesus and I'm going to tell you God is ready to lose his gifts in this church like the gifts have never been released in this church. In the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Ghost, I release the gift of tongues in this place. I release the gift of interpretation in this place. I release the gift of prophecy in this place. I release the spiritual gifts in this place.
Let tongues go forth. Let prophecies go forth. Let interpretations go forth. Let the gift of healing hit this place tonight. Let the gift flow in this place tonight. Let the gifts operate. together and give a shout to him right now. He established divinity schools. He taught and trained young men. 
He changed him to prophets of God. He spoke to a young man. And in this room tonight, through the unction of the Spirit, God is speaking through me at this moment, speaking to young men in this congregation, telling you, you're the greatest generation there's ever been. This church, the elders of this church, for the unpad, all those great leaders of the past that's done such a great job. They have built a great church and they've laid the foundation. But the greatest survival that the Philippines has ever seen is getting ready to happen right now. The greatest outpouring is going to happen right now. If you're under 40 years of age, if you're under 40 years of age, would you get on your feet? And would you claim a fresh anointing? If you're under 40, would you get on your feet? And would you claim a fresh anointing? Come on, get on your feet. Look at that. Look at that, gentlemen. Under 40 years of age. Look at that. Go ahead and claim your anointing. Right now, 
face of God right now. Somebody seeking the face of God. chose not to sit down. Go ahead, my brother, the white shirt up there. Go ahead, let the anointing of God rest upon you right now. Let there be fresh fire fall on you right now. Matthew records nine incidents where the Lord prayed. Mark records eight incidents where God prayed. Go ahead, right there, go ahead. Go ahead and cry out to him, go ahead. Go ahead, let a fresh anointing come on you, that's it. Let fresh fire come on you. The Lord said, call unto me, and I will answer thee with great and mighty things. to experience the boundlessness of God. Here he was inviting us to experience his boundlessness. Prayer will shatter. I'm not going to stop that. Why don't ever think of the building start doing that right now? Why don't ever, come on young men, why don't you get on your feet and do that right there? Why don't there come a cry out from this congregation?
<laughs> Brother William and I just said, there's a hunger in this church like we haven't seen anywhere. You men and women of God, God's going to pour it out on you. You got such a hunger for God tonight. Lift your voice to Him. Cry out to Him. Let Him speak a word to you right now. Brother, I don't know who you are, but you started this tonight by your hunger and desire. In the name of Jesus, I speak in prison touch. Speak anointing upon your life. Go ahead, brother, go ahead. I speak a fresh anointing upon your life. Why don't every young man start doing that? Why don't every young man start doing that right now? Why don't we have an outbreak of crying out and a hunger for God? congregation. Could we all stand just a moment? Lady to lady or man to man. Lady to lady or man to man. I want you to turn and put your hands. Thank you for not leaving. This place is still full. I want you to turn and put your hands shoulder to shoulder. Like, come here Brother Woodward just a moment. Just like this. I want you shoulder. Let, let's, don't do, let's don't do hands. Together. Let's do shoulder to shoulder. Two by two. Don't do three. Do two by two. Turn. Lady to lady, man to man. That's it. All in the balcony. Come on, everybody participate. That's it. Now, we pray for ourselves. 
We preachers can't get to everybody, but I commission you to lay hands. Right now, would you lift your voice and pray for over that person right now? Would you speak a word into their life? Would you speak an anointing over them? Come on, lift your voice.
from the top of that balcony to the very first row. I want us to shout to God for a hunger like we have never shouted. Then I'm going to be through for the night and lift your voice.
Praise the Lord. Palapak na malakas sa Panginoon. Hallelujah. Shout out to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bago tayo mag-iwayo walay ngayong gabi, magbabalik bukas. Paalala po lamang ang uti natin bukas si Pastor Robert Diaz. Alas 7 hanggang alas 8 po, meron tayong breakfast, 8 to 8.30. Meron po tayong uh, preacher, si uh, Devotion, Pastor Kababan. Tapos 8.30 hanggang 9.45, ang 
ODT team hanggang uh, 9.45 to 11, we OTT team. 11 to 12.15, we OTT team. Then, balik po tayo alas 2 hanggang alas 5, business meeting po natin mga pastors. Huwag po natin kalimutan. Praise the Lord. Tumayo tayo lahat. Tayo ay manalangin. Let's pray. Nagilang Diyos, salamat sa ginawa mo at magkilos mo ngayong gabi. Salamat sa mga ligtong mong ginamit. Panginoon, patuloy mo kaming tabunan na iyong presensya. At uuwi kami sa aming mga higa at ngayon, taglay ang kapayapaan, taglay ang mga magpapala. Tinatanggap namin ang iyong salita. Patuloy, maluwalhati ang iyong pangalan hanggang sa matapos ang konferensya ito. Uli ang pag-iingat mo sa amin. Patuloy mong sirain pa sa akin ang lahat ng galaw ng kadiliman. Tabunan mo kami ng iyong presensya. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Magkamayan tayo sa pangalan ng Jesus. Amen.